For two decades, the New England Patriots dynasty in all its glory was best defined by one word, stability. Every year, the organization started the season with a structure so defined, their team continued to build unparalleled consistency that led to crushing opponents on a weekly and yearly basis. They had the best coach, the best assistant coaches, the best game plans, some of the best players ever, and of course, the best quarterback. After Brady left, that structure was still intact, and just one year later, they seemed to have found their next Tom Brady, a guy who plays like him, acts like him, and looks like he could be the next him, well, I say not so fast. Yes, Mac Jones balled the hell out his rookie year, leading the Pats to a 10-7 record and even a playoff appearance, and on film, he does so many things good, but there are things he can't do, and what's even more pressing, the Patriots' stability is slowly rotting from the inside. We'll start with the things that Mac is good at, and there are a lot of them, definitely some major areas he struggles in that are concerning, and we'll end with why the incredibly stable Patriots are not so stable anymore. The reason Mac found so much success in year one is that he had stability in the coaching, culture, and scheme surrounding him. He's at his best when he's playing within the structure of the offense, and when that structure is good, he plays good football. He is a system quarterback through and through, which in no way is a bad thing. He'll operate within the structure of the offense at the highest level, meaning the ball will come out on time, every receiver will be viable on every play, since he can read the entire field, and he can keep the offense on schedule. When the Patriots didn't have a negative play on a drive, they led the NFL in scoring rate. Mack is able to hit the layup throws over and over at such a high clip, the Patriots can build concepts and packages off of those gimme throws. His most targeted route was the quick out route since he could hit it in his sleep, which was a perfect fit for the Patriots' offense. They had one of the highest run rates in the league, so they in turn faced one of the highest rates of one high safety coverages, cover one or cover three. Teams play those two coverages to stop the run since it brings one of the deep safeties into the box and positions the other deep. Cover 3 zone has three deep defenders, and because there's just one high safety, these two deep corners are basically put on islands. They have to pedal backwards to protect their deep thirds, which means there's a ton of space underneath them for layup after layup. Mack was so consistent with these throws, the Patriots complemented them with concepts that built off previous plays to exploit defenses. When offensive coordinators have a quarterback who can consistently operate within the structure of the play, that allows them to set defenders up throughout the game, and that's one of the reasons this offense was so good. With just the one high safety, Trayvon Diggs becomes isolated on Kendrick Bourne. Diggs knows they keep hitting the speed out right under his nose, so when he bites on it, but Bourne is actually running it out and up, Mac just has to hold the safety with his eyes and delivers this right up the seam. He is really good at throwing the seam since it's a timing throw, where once he hits the top of his drop, the ball has to come out, or the free safety can make a play. The Patriots added additional layers to their out-and-up concept to include a seam to give him another option on that side of the field. They designed this concept to be run out of multiple formations, where in shotgun he'll read the seam first, then the double move outside, and under center on play action like it is here, he'll target whichever seam has a defender with outside leverage. You can see he starts to his right to check that seam, but the defender is inside leverage, so Mac immediately comes back to his left, gets that outside leverage he's looking for, and because he's playing on time, even with a pretty soft throw, it still beats the safety. Watch the timing and anticipation here. He sets to his right, and this moment is key. The safety is sitting in the dead middle of the field reading his eyes, so if Mac takes even half of a step more and tries to wait till he sees Hunter Henry is open, this could end horribly. But since he throws to a spot instead of to Henry, he floats in the touchdown. There is definitely chatter of his lack of arm strength, but that actually doesn't really pop up on his film since he's proven he can make throws he probably shouldn't be able to. On the same concept, but now from shotgun, Max starts to the seam, but sees the defender is inside leverage, so he progresses to the out and up, but the corner is playing off, so that route is dead. Usually you don't want to throw a seam this late in the down, especially if you have below average arm strength, but Mac has good enough velocity that more than gets the job done. 
When corners start sitting on the out and up outside, the Patriots then have even another layer they've schemed up called a squirrel route, which is an out and up, but then breaks off to the side. Max shows good anticipation here to throw this before the receiver is fully out of his break, which maximizes separation from the defender. That anticipation helps him dominate zone coverages because of how well he understands how to play in structure. He's much headier and cerebral and understands how all the space and zone will play out, where the defenders are gonna be, and how to move them out of the way. He knows before the snap his key defender is gonna be Kari Wills, who will either sit for the curl route opening the flat or will jump the flat opening the curl. Mac uses his eyes and a little pump fake to move him to the flat and then immediately throws the curl without hesitation just past Darius Leonard's long ass arms. A quarterback has to understand all of this pre-snap, where to put his eyes, who to manipulate, just so he can play on time. If this ball comes out even a hair too late, Leonard easily knocks it down and probably intercepts it. So then, what gives? Mack can already do so many great things that quarterbacks years his seniors still struggle with, and he'll only get better the longer he plays, right? Well, no. He dominates zone coverage as we've seen, but he has major problems against man. He basically becomes a completely different quarterback when his receivers are getting that one-on-one -on -one coverage instead of when defenses are sitting and guarding zones, and it actually makes a lot of sense. He isn't an elite arm talent at all, his skill set is finding spaces in zone coverage and manipulating them to create even more, but against man, he isn't consistently accurate enough to make defenses pay since it's all about his arm winning instead of his head. Against zone, he can look off defenders and throw into open windows with great anticipation, but against man, since each defender is looking at their receiver instead of at Mac, he can't really look them off, and anticipation isn't quite as important since there aren't really open windows, just open or not open receivers. This brings us to the destabilization of the Patriots as a whole, which does in fact begin with those receivers. Man coverage is a coverage where the defense basically dares your receivers to beat their corners, and the Patriots receivers are a collective meh. I like Hunter Henry a lot, I wouldn't say he's a game breaker. I also like Jacoby Myers, but he's kind of the same, and this entire group just does not have a guy who petrifies defenses to the point where they're forced back into zone coverage. Mac's style of play is as a distributor, he's very, very good at getting the ball where it needs to be and on time, but that style of quarterback is ultimately only as good as the guys he's distributing to, and if he doesn't have any game breakers, then the ceiling of this offense is limited. When the Patriots needed to drop back and pass on third and long, the offensive line just couldn't hold up, and that unit, besides the unproven Cole Strange, hasn't gotten any better. In fact, they lost one of their best players in right guard Shaq Mason. And... Remember that stat at the beginning, where when they had zero negative plays on a drive, they led the league in scoring rate? Well, when they did have a negative play during a drive, their scoring rate plummeted all the way to 26th. This team does not have a receiver who they can turn to to dominate, and while they do have a very promising young rookie quarterback, he's never going to be the put-the-team-on-my-back game-breaker type of player. On third downs with 1-8 to eight yards to move the chains, they had the best conversion rate in the NFL, but on third and 9+, plus, that literally dropped to dead last. The instability of the receiving core and offensive line is just the tip of the iceberg, where for the first time in decades, the scheme is somewhat called into question with Josh McDaniels now in Las Vegas. Sure, it'll be the same scheme that it's always been, but now the guy calling it has never been dicier. Charlie Weiss was the offensive coordinator for five years when Brady started, and they won multiple Super Bowls. Then McDaniels came in, 2007 happened, Bill O'Brien a few years later, back to the Super Bowl, then McDaniels again, but now we have failed NFL head coaches in Matt Patricia and Joe Judge vying to call plays, and both have never called offensive plays anywhere. And I hate to be that guy, because I'm the biggest belly fan ever, but Bill Belichick just turned 70 years old, and let's say he's still an elite coach until he hangs him up, how long could he possibly keep going? 
The Patriots appear to be moving in the right direction heading into 2022, but an organization that's been rooted in stability could suddenly crumble because of a deteriorating foundation. Tom Brady didn't enter the league as a world beater, but the Patriots didn't ask him to be a world beater with what they had surrounding him. A young Belichick, a dominant run game, a stellar offensive line, an elite defense, and a legitimate offensive coordinator. Sure, Brady had to later overcome some of the shortcomings that we talked about today, but let's be real. Just because Mac is like Brady does not mean he is Brady. The Patriots could very well be building Dynasty 2.0, but in my opinion, it's much more likely that they've already begun collapsing heading into Mac's sophomore campaign. He is good, but is he about to elevate average surrounding talent and an organization that for the first time in forever doesn't have its arrow pointing up? The answer is no. The guard is changing in New England, so let's see if the Patriots can prove everybody wrong again.